privilege to be able to join you today for another edition of The Voice of Hope. My name is Trisha Beckles, and I welcome you, and I thank God for you. I thank God that he continues to do marvelous things in all of our lives. We can choose to be a people of gratitude. We can choose to be a people that knows beyond the shadow of a doubt that Almighty God continues to work in the midst of his people and on behalf of his people. If you perchance are feeling as if nothing good is happening for you, I want you to just take a step back. Even if you're telling God, God, I don't know what I'm giving you thanks for, but I'm giving you thanks all the same. Because know and understand that the mere fact that you're even in your right mind and are able to even hear me, you're able to see me, you're able to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that you are alive, that is a good starting point to give God thanks for. And so we choose on this program to look up, knowing and understanding where our help comes from. And in the midst of situations and circumstance, our God remains true. Our God remains faithful. And that is why David was able to say in Psalm chapter 42, verse 11, he says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. It tells me and it reminds us all that regardless of what is happening, we can place our hope in God. And I'm asking somebody today, if you think you cannot place your hope in God, what would you suggest as a substitute that would even come close to matching the power, the awesome splendor, the glorious majesty of the one true and living God. Think about it. There is nothing that is even worth considering because our God is great, our God is mighty, our God is awesome. And in the midst of life, he remains God. He still remains the God that is looking out for you, that knows what you need even before you ask, and is willing and more than able to supply your need according to his riches in glory. So take heart in the midst of, I mean, we, we in a state, in our country where, you know, just about anything and everything could happen. But we thank God today that God remains God. And for those of you who are regulars to the program, you would know that in our last episode, we were talking about, you know, that whole um, fact that God will lead us. And we looked at it from the perspective of the children of Israel. And as we look at our own country, there is little doubt that we are indeed in a time of transition. So we took heart from what was taking place and we drew from the example of the children of Israel where we said, God will lead us. Regardless of what happens, God will lead us. As Job said in Job chapter 23, verse 10, but he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. It doesn't matter how hard the testing seems. It doesn't matter. I mean, sometimes you might even wonder, well, what next? But understand, God is still in charge of the process. And so we reiterate the fact today that God will continue to lead us. In that lesson, in that episode, we were able to look at the fact that the children of Israel did not move unless the cloud moved. And I'll just take you briefly back to Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 9, sorry, from verses 20 to 23 where we were told, and so it was, when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. And so it was, when the cloud abode from even unto the morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, then they journeyed whether it was by day or by night that the cloud was taken up, they journeyed, or whether it were two days or a month or a year that the cloud 
tarried upon the tabernacle remaining thereon, the children of Israel abode in their tents and journeyed not. But when it was taken up, then they journeyed. At the commandment of the Lord, they rested in the tents, and at the commandment of the Lord, they journeyed. They kept the charge of the Lord at the commandment of the Lord by the hand of Moses. I want us to take note of those verses because in and of ourselves, it is very easy to find sometimes God is taking too long and to find God should have done this and God should have done that instead of waiting on God, knowing that God has a perfect plan for each and every one of us. And by the hand of Moses, the children of Israel in that season, in the midst of their journey to the promised land, they waited on God to lead them. So I want to ask us a good question today. For what nation is there so great? Who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? I'll ask us again, for what nation is there so great? Who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? Can we say this of our nation? Can the same be said of Trinidad and Tobago? Can the same be said of the nation of the world where you live in? understanding that TIN goes beyond Trinidad and Tobago? I mean, is that something that we truly desire, whether on a personal level or on a national level, that people can look at us and say that God is so nigh unto us in all things that we call upon him for? Shall we pray today? Father and God, I just bless you. I give you all the glory, I give you all the honor, I give you all the praise. Lord, I thank you that in the midst of life, in spite of our failings, in spite of our shortcomings, in spite of our murmurings, you continue to look out for us, God. Father, we thank you that you are able, even in spite of ourselves, in spite of when we are faithful, unfaithful, in spite of when we are disobedient, that God, you continue to want best for us. You continue to want to work in the lives of your people. And we thank you for this good opportunity, God, where we understand that even as we as a people are in a transition, that God, you are still God. You are still in charge. Your way is the best way and your word is the final word. Father and God, for each and every person that are bowed in your presence today, I lift them up before you. I thank you, O oh God, that you are willing and able to show yourself mighty on their behalf. I thank you today, God, that there is still nothing that is too hard for you to do on the behalf of your people. And God, I thank you that you are the God that if anybody dares to ask anything that doesn't exist, you are the God that is able to create it for them. And so, God, we bless you. We exalt you. I commit this time into your hands and I say, have your way. I thank you for your hands upon the Tobago Inspirational Network, oh God. And I thank you today for breaking down strongholds that want to work against this station, oh God. I thank you today for your divine covering and your divine favor upon the station. And I pray, God, that your purposes will be fulfilled and your name be glorified. I commit everything and everyone connected to the station into your hands. Cover us all with the blood of Jesus, your son. And let only your will be done and your name be glorified. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So you may or may not be familiar with that verse, but that verse was taken out of the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4. And I'll invite us at this time to read from verses 5 to verse 9. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel as they are preparing to enter into the promised land. He says, Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, 
that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great? Who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Think about it. I know and understand that in the midst of life, we don't necessarily think of what God is doing. But I'm encouraging us today that even in the midst of our personal circumstances, God continues to work. And because he is God and he sees the bigger picture, because he sees the wider picture, he is more than able to cause your situation, to cause your circumstance to work together for good, even on a personal level as well as on a wider level. So, I mean, looking at this passage of scripture, it is very interesting to note that the children of Israel are in a time of transition. They have overcome some very bad. They've gone through some even worse. And now they are seemingly on the verge of much, much better. I mean, thinking about it as a human being, your temptation is to relax. We all go through stuff and then you, you get a breather and you say, but in the midst of it, God chose to warn his people. Because beyond your seeing that it is time that you get a breather, God knows that the enemy does not let up that easily. And God sees what is ahead of you. And God is willing and able to put things in place so that you can overcome, so that the challenges you will walk into will not overwhelm you. You know, we have this saying that for every level, there's another devil. I'm saying in the midst of it, before God even allows you to get there, he is willing and able to prepare you for what is to come, good, bad, in between. And knowing the all-knowing, the all-seeing God, he may take a different approach from what you may be thinking as the best way. So yes, you want to relax. Yes, you want to enjoy the spoils. But God is constantly working on your behalf. So his leading of them didn't stop because they were getting to the land that he promised. I mean, if you think about it, if anything, he was just beginning. Because no one understand that he took them out of Egypt. And he was going to bring them to this land. The, 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 the amount of armies and peoples and trials and challenges that they were able to overcome would have already elevated them in the consciousness of the people that they were going to face. And so they could not go in with just the same old mindset and the same old murmuring and the same old attitudes of before, lest they get defeated. If you think about the journey of the children of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land, you would remember that there were even times along the way when God got even angry and he threatened to destroy them for their disobedience, for their attitudes. And Moses then had to remind him, what would your enemies say? I'll give you one example. In Numbers chapter 14, when Caleb and Joshua brought back the report of the promised land and the people were so distressed because the other 10 spies said, listen, this land is too much for us and the people are giants. And, you know, Caleb and Joshua are trying to say, let us go and take the land. But instead, the people wanted to stone them. What was the Lord's response? God was saying, listen, I will just clean out, I'll wipe out these people and I'll create you an even greater nation. But here's the role of a leader. Here's the role of a man of God, a man whose heart is tuned into God. Moses was able to say in Numbers chapter 14 verses 13 to 16, he says, 
then the Egyptians shall hear it. For thou broughtest up this people in thy might from among them, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou, Lord, art among this people, that thou, Lord, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by daytime in a pillar of a cloud, and in a pillar of fire by night. Now if thou shalt kill all this people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them, therefore he hath slain them in the wilderness. So how did God respond? It says, And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word. But I want us to hear this part in verse 21. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. I'll say it again. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord. And I'm saying in effect, through the lives of the people, he will be glorified. I'm saying to us, that is you and me, who name the name of Christ, not by what he has already done. If you think about the example that we are talking about here. Yes, he brought the children of Israel out. They knew about that already. But he's saying, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of God, not by what he has already done, but by what he will do as they yield themselves to it. So yes, in part one, we, we looked at the journey and now we are looking some more about the whole transition. And I want to make a distinction because when you talk about the journey, you look more at the physical move, the things they had to overcome, where God led by the fire and by the cloud, a lot of physical obstacles along the way where they were changing a physical location. I mean, you had the Red Sea and everything else. And in the midst of that journey, they had physical manifestations of God's presence with them. So when we talk today about a transition, we are speaking about the preparation, the change, the adjustment of your mindset to this new reality that God is bringing you into. It requires, in addition to the physical shift, it requires something of a mental shift where you are able then to handle what new, what changes lie on the horizon without looking back and murmuring and, you know, just making God wonder, what? What more can I do for this people? But I'm saying to somebody today, in the midst of whatever transition you are going through, God remains God. He doesn't change. In the midst of whatever transition you are facing, as you adjust to life in whatever new reality is before you, God remains God. As he told Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. And I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I'm encouraging you to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that in the midst of the transition, God is the God that puts things and people in place. So as we look at the children of Israel, Moses, knowing that God had told him he wasn't gonna go over with them, Moses was able to mentor to prepare Joshua and further to commission him for what was going to come. He was able to commission him in the eyes of the people that the people recognized the hand of God operating through Joshua 
especially because of what Moses was able to do with him. And it speaks to a level of continuity that even as our leaders yield to the Spirit of God, to the leading of God, whatever transitions we face as a people will allow God to be glorified, will allow for his purposes to be fulfilled. I mean, sometimes we go through a transition and we think that our past experiences are enough to equip us for what is ahead. But I'm saying to you today that sometimes God shows better. We know according to 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that God prepares us for whatever we are going to face especially when it seems too overwhelming. The verse tells us that there has no temptation taken us, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful and just, and he will help us through any one of those temptations. But I'm saying to us to know and understand that God is taking us through these transitions. Know and understand that it's already inside of you, but sometimes you have to go through it. And as you go through it, especially when you feel like you don't want to go on, when you take another step, and you take that step knowing that it is only God that is helping you to take that step, you realize what God has already placed in you to go through what he's allowing you to face. And so, as we look at the children of Israel, he essentially commits, God essentially commits the entire book of Deuteronomy and then to Joshua to prepare them for the transition, asking the question, how are you going to be in this place that I am taking you? And I mean, it could be a physical place, it could be a life circumstance, how are you going to be? How are you going to live in that place? And I know in the last episode, I spoke a lot about the comforts that enslave us because a lot of times we could get comfortable and we don't necessarily want to let go to what is familiar. But in order to get to what God wants, it is something we can hardly avoid. And so God in his faithfulness he used his servant Moses to try to equip them. And as you review, and I'm encouraging you to take the time and read through these books from Numbers through Deuteronomy going into Joshua. Look and see that a significant part of the scripture is spent warning his people about things to look out for, encouraging them to obey God, to trust God and to obey God in order to avoid the many, many curses that come with disobedience. I mean, when you get to Deuteronomy chapter 28, there are 68 verses in total. And by verse 15, God has already finished with telling them about the blessings of obedience. And the rest of the chapter lists out a whole lot of curses that come with disobedience. And I'm asking us the question again, could it be that God sees beyond what we see? Is it enough to say, God, I trust him? I mean, it is very easy sometimes to get caught up thinking that, yeah, God just wants to control us or God wants to suppress our joy, suppress our freedom, that we can just, you know, relax for a little bit. But I like to encourage myself and I want to encourage you. God loves you more than you can ever love yourself. And God wants more for you than you can ever want for yourself. God knows every fiber, every cell, everything that he has put into you for a specific purpose. And he knows what is required in order for those purposes to be fulfilled. I mean, ask yourself, why would a loving God who has brought you through so much, who has helped you to overcome so much, now turn and want to prevent you from reaping the rewards of your obedience and your faithfulness? 
especially if you consider like the children of Israel with his fame at stake. He says his name will be glorified throughout all the earth. Why would he risk that? By putting bad in your way. I mean, don't let the things that you see around you, don't let the discouragement overwhelm and overcome you. I mean, ask yourself, is it that God sees the trappings and the things that can so easily distract you and chooses to warn you about them so that you can remain focused on what he has called you to do in the first place? And I'm saying to you today as we're getting ready to wrap up, in the midst of what God is transitioning you to, God remains God. Even when we're winning, even when we're losing, God remains God. Even when we don't even know, even when we feel like giving up, even when we think we're all alone, even when we think that nobody understands, even when the obstacles seem too big and we can't find a solution, nothing is bigger than God. Not COVID, not a restriction, not anything. And I'm saying to us, here is the assurance that we as the people of God have. In Deuteronomy 33, 27, where we are told the eternal God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall thrust out the enemy from before thee, and shall say, destroy them. God is capable of making a way for you and directing you. There's no need to lose sight of God and go your own way. It's not always gonna be smooth sailing. Your enemies won't give up on you, but God will remain. God, trust God, hold on to God, and let God be glorified. Sometimes the very person that brought you to the point of transition will not be the person to take you forward, but God remains God. Keep your eyes on him. He will see you through. God bless you. <music>